Welcome to Explore Zone Tech Talk on protection against ransomware through MicroFocus Data Protector. Hello, my name is Trace Edwards. I'm the Technical Customer Success Manager for Data Protector. I've been in the high tech industry for over 25 years in a number of roles, including the last nine years globally supporting Data Protector. Let's get started. This presentation really just scratches the surface, but it should give you a good idea on the seriousness of ransomware attacks and how to protect your data against ransomware. We'll discuss what it is, the primary target, how to protect your data, and recover from an attack. So what is ransomware? Ransomware is an IT attack usually transmitted as a Trojan virus or a malware worm infecting a server's operating system. And it's either through a downloaded file or exploiting a software vulnerability. Once infected, ransomware launches and encrypts all the user's files and data with a security key that's known only by the creator of the ransomware virus. The notice that you see on the screen is left on the desktop of the infected server. The operating system is left functional for the most part, but all the data is inaccessible. To decrypt your data, the user is prompted to obtain the key from the originator for an exchange of payment in untraceable Bitcoin. So this slide is a bit dated, but it gives you a brief history and an example of the historical damage that has been caused by cyber attacks. So back in 2017, Hewlett Packard sponsored research across six countries and 237 companies conducting over 1,200 interviews with security and IT professionals to understand the impact of the growing cyber crimes. What they discovered is how organizations have successfully, but also far too often unsuccessfully defended themselves against these crimes. In 2015, the average loss per company hit by cyber crimes worldwide was at $7.7 .7 million. By 2016, that number had risen over 23% to $9.5 million. By 2017, the average losses per company in the United States was over $17 million including business disruption, revenue losses, and damage to equipment. So damage caused by ransomware, to give you an idea of the effectiveness of ransomware, 70% of infected businesses paid the ransom. 50% of those companies paid between 10 and $40,000 US dollars. Only 42% of ransomware victims ever recovered their data. One in four paying victims never recovered their data. Okay, so what's vulnerable and what do we do about it? Ransomware can affect your production virtual machines running on the hypervisor and even your backup proxy can be affected. Snapshot only backup solutions like some of our large competitors are not safe either. In order to have a true backup solution, the format change is needed. This is only available if a backup to disk solution is used. Backup to disk includes like store once catalyst stores, data domain boost and data protectors deduplication store which provides a format change that cannot be infected by the ransomware attacks. Then beyond that, once the data protector backup has been taken, first of all, it is in an unreachable DP format, so it is no longer vulnerable. And that's whether you choose to encrypt or not. Even if it's not encrypted on the disk, it still cannot be directly read by any known ransomware attack, and especially if it's on offline media such as tapes, or if it's been offloaded to a backup target or a secondary storage location. 
The, these are only accessible through backup APIs. They are not directly readable or writable. So in a sense, Data Protector is erecting a number of barriers that is impossible for ransomware to cross to be able to infect your backup data. Again, Data Protector provides its own format. Therefore, every ba backup is protected against ransomware. So since the release of Data Protector 10, Data Protector introduced a secure communication model. So in the first bit on the left, secure peering, that is when only secure hosts can talk to each other and there is a trusted relationship that is established. All communication is through TLS 1.2 secure channel. In the middle, you have centralized command execution meaning that even in large environments with hundreds or thousands of clients, there isn't arbitrary communication going on between any two hosts. It's simply not possible. All communication has to be mediated and brokered by the cell manager. So there's no arbitrary links. The only way any two hosts ever need to communicate with each other is if the cell manager is invoking a backup or a restore. In other words, there's no rogue communication, no virus passing, no encrypting or, commu or corrupting commands that are at all possible. So if one client is infected, it cannot infect the, other, the others. And then the third part to the right is that DP has limited the port count from potentially hundreds, actually thousands, to three ports. So you don't have to poke holes in your firewall to make room for a host of ports and make it look like Swiss cheese with hundreds of holes, which are all potential points of access. You just have two to three ports that you need to secure for all client communication with Data Protector. Okay, and to certify that statement, Data Protector is certified as per the US common criteria which are a set of guidelines put forth by NIST in the US and also validated by various European bodies. That basically describes how software and hardware should behave. These gauge whether DP complies with best practices with a very comprehensive certification process and DP made those guidelines. So this sounds far less impressive than it truly is. It was actually a very grueling process. Common criteria certification is that which enables Data Protector and Microfocus as the vendor of choice for the U.S. Armed Forces and other very large companies under the U.S. DOD's purview. So another feature worth quickly mentioning is bare metal disaster recovery. It's actually an old technology, but something that is increasingly important with ransomware. We have customers that have been hit with ransomware and their only recourse was to completely restore the server at the bare metal level, what we call a bare metal restoration. So when it comes to EADR, Enhanced Automated Disaster Recovery, what we do is we capture all the data on the system, as always, but we also have the ability to capture the system state like the hardware attributes. So you back up your server as an entity by itself. And then we support catastrophic disk failure when your data is completely gone and you need to rebuild your server from scratch you can rebuild with this disaster recovery mechanism to bring back everything from your data to your OS to the actual working state. And one important thing to mention is we do bare metal disaster recovery. We can recover to the same box, of course, but we can also recover to dissimilar hardware. There is a wizard that guides you through that. Or for a quick turnaround, you may move from a bare metal standalone box to a virtual machine or vice versa. So due to the ability of ransomware to interact with data, I've listed the many various ways in which we break up data and make it inaccessible to corruption and ransomware. 
So depending on your strategy, we give you total flexibility. You can push your data to be offline and unobtainable or even air gapped, which means completely disconnected from the internet, isolated from the outside world. Another feature is immutability. Immutability is a feature within store once and being added to Data Protector's dedupe store in the very near future, which prevents your backup data from being deleted or overwritten for a configurable period of time. It's controlled independently of the backup solution itself. So this protects against human error as well. So of course, in Data Protector, you can set your retention time, let's say 30 days or so, but immutability is a secondary hardware set priority that even the backup software itself cannot supersede. So it guarantees security and again, in a format that cannot be reached by ransomware. So also worth mentioning, there are a number of backup target possibilities, backup to disk, cloud targets, worm media, which is tapes, which is really the gold standard of protection because it simply cannot be overwritten. And Data Protector uh, supports all of these capabilities as well. Once you've taken your backup, you can do a remote replication or an object copy, which may include copies to the cloud or to an alternate disaster recovery site so that your backup data is hard locked in a separate repository, which can only be accessed through specific backup APIs. So we have many different possible options to keep your data in the best combination of locations for performance and security. You combine that with the secure transport, centralized command communication, and as always, encrypted data communication between client. So you can configure it based on your performance needs, but all these choices are certainly available to you. So this concludes our brief discussion on Data Protector's ransomware protection. Thank you for listening.